few weeks ago, we had the idea to share with the Photo Enthusiast Network the gear that we're always bringing along with us for photography. I mean, beyond the obvious camera lens stuff. And since we're all serious travelers, we decided to include some extras that make travel just a little bit more comfortable. And with the holidays rapidly approaching, you could think of this as a gift guide because I've got items on this list ranging from $7 to $2,700. Before we jump in, I'd love for you to drop those pieces of gear that you always bring with you. Again, besides the obvious camera, lens, battery, memory card, hopefully those always go with you. You can drop those in the comments right down below. Let's get right started. Let's get right started. Let's get started with the Temba Tools Cable Duo 4. This small dual-sided Temba bag is a key component to staying organized and staying organized while traveling is really important. There's nothing worse than missing an epic moment because you couldn't find what you're looking for in that black hole of your camera bag. I love the see-through sides, so I can quickly tell at a glance which side I need to open up. And one side has these nice little elastic loops to keep cables organized. I basically keep all of my charging cables in here along with a small power puck, camera remote, and one of the very best multi-tools for photographers, the Leo Photo Tool. This actually came with an older Leo Photo tripod that I bought, but they sell it separately for just $12. And this is not the first time I've talked about this tool. I'm pretty sure it's been on other gift guides in the past, but it remains an essential piece of gear and comes along with me on all trips. It's basically a plastic carabiner keychain thing with three common sizes of hex wrenches, a flathead screwdriver, and a bottle opener. I keep mine inside this tiny orange stuff sack along with a spare tripod plate. I really like having this bright colored little bag. It's super easy to quickly find inside my bigger camera bag. I'm honestly not quite sure where it came from, but I also have a small green bag, very similar to this, but it zips closed that I keep my charged camera batteries in. These colorful bags just make it that much quicker to spot and know what's inside at a glance. I'd say look around your house, see if you can find some little colorful bags to repurpose for organization, or I found some similar ones on Amazon. Now, as a workshop leader, there are two more tools that I find really, really helpful that I bring along with me. This is this Nova Flex. It has a bunch of hex wrenches too, so there's some overlap with the Leo Photo, but it has a few more sizes that are really nice for clients having tripod issues. And then there are these. You know what these are? Ha, you thought I paused the video so that you could answer. <laughs> These are filter rings or filter wrenches. The number of times filters get stuck on lenses or more commonly on other adapter rings is more often than I want. And these make quick work of stuck filters. Another piece of gear that always comes with me and embarrassingly, it wasn't on my initial list until Teresa Rice mentioned it. Uh, the only excuse I can come up for leaving it off the list is it's generally permanently attached to my camera and I forget that I even need to bring it. And that's an L bracket. L brackets allow you to easily switch your shooting orientation when using a tripod. I mentioned them and showed some demos in my recent FLM tripod review, which you can win. Link to that information is right down below. When shooting vertically, it allows you to keep your camera centered over the tripod for better stability and better results when shooting a pano. And they can even provide a little bit of protection in case you drop your camera with this hard L or metal bracket providing some protection. These days, I appreciate the simpler L brackets, but I do re recommend that you spend the money on a bracket designed to specifically fit your camera. The fit and function of those are usually best. Kirk, that's this one, really right stuff, and usually small rig are ones that I can recommend. I say usually because I had a bad experience with the first small rig L bracket for the A1. You can see I'm not the only one. Others from small rig have been excellent and their prices are usually very reasonable. Just read the reviews of the one that you want to buy before purchasing. The next item on my list is a headlamp. A good headlamp is a must if you plan to shoot at night, but even if you're gonna catch sunrise or sunset, you're gonna find yourself walking in the dark and having a hands-free light can keep you safe. It's also super helpful when looking through that black hole of your camera bag again. It doesn't even need to be that dark for things to hide in the corners. 
Now I have two requirements when it comes to headlamps. One, it must be rechargeable via USB-C, so I don't have to mess around with carrying extra batteries with me and USB-C because I'm working hard to make everything in my life chargeable by, via USB-C. And the second requirement is that it has to have a separate and easy red light on and off. Too often, headlamps have this kind of single button and you cycle through the modes. And if you're out with a group or trying to preserve your own night vision while you're out there on your own, cycling through a bright white light to get to the red is terrible. This Fenix isn't really cheap, but it does exactly what I need with an easy double click for red or a single long click for white. The white is super bright and you can actually even remove this light and clip it somewhere else. Now, one bonus recommendation, add some glow in the dark tape to the legs of your tripod. Makes it really easy to see in the dark, which can help you find it again if you've left it someplace and also can help others avoid tripping or knocking into your gear at night. Now we're gonna move on and talk a little bit about power. This is the TG90 portable charger, a 6,000 milliamp battery. I'm almost always carrying a battery with me. I want some spare power on hand for phone or even the camera in case something goes bad. Usually though, I don't want a heavy bank in my bag. And last year I found this small battery that's large enough for a full recharge of my phone, but light enough that when it's in my Temba dual bag, it really doesn't weigh anything more. It offers built-in USB-C and lightning cords, which make it super easy to pull out of my bag and use. And yes, it does recharge via USB-C or micro USB. This one, as I said, is 6,000 milliamp and costs less than $30. All right, this next item, if you've been on any of my workshops with me in the last year or two, you've probably heard me describe this as life changing. It might be a little over the top, but I really love this little pocket. It simply sticks to the back of your laptop and holds a hard drive. This makes working while traveling so much better. There's no worrying about dangling drives or disconnections while you're working. It makes it just so much more portable. Now this one is sized nicely for smaller SSDs, but you can buy larger versions to accommodate other hard drive sizes. Just really wanna make sure you should be traveling with SSDs at this point. They're rugged, they're fast, they require less battery power from your laptop. I really love these one or two terabytes from SanDisks. I also love this pocket because I can slip the USB cord in there for travel too. Now, if you don't like the idea of a pocket on the back of your computer, you could simply add some sticky Velcro to your laptop and on each hard drive and switch those out as you need. I've got a bonus item here and maybe this is just an excuse to convince you to consider a Mac for your next purchase. I am so happy with this MacBook M1. These silicon chips are fantastic. It breezes through Lightroom and Photoshop. I can easily edit 8K footage from my mirrorless camera. It offers a fantastic screen that I don't need to calibrate. It's got great battery life. And I love that I can charge via the MagSafe or any of the USB-C ports, which just makes it that much easier to travel with. I leave this big heavy puck at home and use the smaller Anchor 65 watt charger that provides me several ports. Just know that the 65 watts is shared between the ports. So if you've got several devices plugged in, your MacBook is going to charge a little bit slower. But in almost a full year of traveling with this Anchor and this MacBook, I've never run into any issues. And I don't want to get into a big PC versus Mac discussion, but I'll just say, I've seen a lot of client laptops, either in person on workshops over the last couple of years, one-to-one -one Lightroom teaching remotely. And I have to say that even the latest Windows computers are often painful to use with Adobe products. They just don't run as well. The latest rumors suggest we won't see new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros until next year. Those will use the M2 chip. So I do think this is a good time to buy, especially with some of the holiday deals coming up. I'm gonna link to the base model that I think is just fine for most of your needs. And also to the one I purchased that has just a bit more power. And I expect this laptop to last me easily five solid years of editing, if not more. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Let's transition to the travel comfort category. I've come outside to talk about my next item, and that is an extremely lightweight and packable rain jacket. It's so lightweight and packable that I never question whether or not I should bring it. 
I just always do. And that is some really nice peace of mind because I'll know if I get into any kind of little rain showers or cold wind blowing, because it acts nicely as a windbreaker too, that I'm gonna be covered. Now, if I'm going on a trip where I know that I'm gonna be experiencing some real different weather, like, you know, rain, real rain, then I'm gonna pack a more serious raincoat. But being able to have this with me all of the time, no matter what, is a nice, great peace of mind. I love it so much, I've got a pair of their pants as well. They're very minimalistic style. It just has one chest pocket. This is the Outdoor Research Helium Jacket, but many of the other good manufacturers have a nice lightweight raincoat too that I think you should check out. And similar to the lightweight rain jacket, I almost always throw a pair of fleece beanies and gloves into, where'd the hat go? It's so little I lost it. fleece gloves and a fleece beanie in my bag. I don't like being cold, but even more than that, I don't like missing photo opportunities because I'm uncomfortable and need to take myself someplace warmer. Very simple, very packable pair of hat and gloves can make a real difference. Outdoor Research makes a pair of gloves called the Flurry Sensors that I can recommend, but I'd suggest you go to your local outdoor store. Try to find ones that fit best for you. Now in colder climates, I'll lay over these fingerless wool gloves and that helps. And in very damp climates, I have a pair of OR waterproof shells that I layer over top. But otherwise, this is my glove systems from 40 Fahrenheit to minus 40 Fahrenheit. Now let's talk about style. I think these have a ton of style, but more importantly, a recent conversation with my optometrist the one I went to, it's not like I have a regular one, reminded me just how important it is to protect your eyes from the sun. I love these lightweight, armless sunglasses from Ombras. They are so travel friendly, durable, excellent quality, and they stay put and they feel like nothing on your face. And this company plants 20 mangrove trees for each pair sold, making them carbon negative, very carbon negative. I've got no relationship with this company. I just think that this is a fantastic product. And if you're looking for a new pair of sunglasses, you should consider these. They do offer a 30 day return policy if you find that you don't like them or if they don't work well for you. A pair of Sony XB910. There's actually kind of an overwhelming number of different noise canceling headphones. And I have resisted buying for many years, but Sometime last year during one of the sales, I picked up a pair of these and quickly realized just how much more peaceful and enjoyable a flight is when wearing these. They cancel much of the outside noise on a plane, including crying babies, and allow me to hear nice music, podcasts, or watch whatever terrible movies are on the plane. Something to keep in mind. Now we're gonna move on and talk about, I mean, actually, maybe this should be up in the camera gear section because this device does live in my camera bear. Camera bear? This device does live in my camera bag. This Garmin GPS allows me to use satellites to send messages to friends and family, even when I'm far away from any cell phone tower. And more importantly, if something serious happens, I can activate this little SOS button on the side, which is gonna alert the local authorities and start to trigger a rescue. This is really nice peace of mind when I'm out in the back country with clients. Now, a bonus feature of this device is that it offers GPS tracking. That's fun to share with friends and family. When you're off adventuring, they can see where you are in real time. Again, even if you don't have cell service and it can also be used to geotag your photos. Now, this device is becoming a little less necessary as cell phone manufacturers and service providers are starting to offer emergency messaging options. But this rugged little waterproof device with great battery life is again, really nice peace of mind and very handy to bring along on more remote journeys. Note that there is a monthly subscription plan that's needed with this device. It ranges from $12 a month with an annual payment to $15 a month, month to month. And that can go all the way up to $50 to $65 a month, depending on the number of text messages you wanna send, the detail of the tracking, etc. You can suspend monthly charges. So if you only use this device on certain months or seasons or trips, you can turn it on or off as needed. And Garmin does offer a newer, more message centric device that you might want to consider. That's it. That's a look at the gear that I bring with me and find super helpful for photography and travel. Actually, two more quick things. Packing cubes, if you don't have those, buy them. 
and microfiber cloth. So fantastic to get moisture off your camera. Okay, now that's really it. I wanna know what's on your list. You can leave that in the comment right down below. And again, if you appreciated this video, I would love it if you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, you can hit the subscribe along with the little bell and, and you could share it with your photographer friends. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.